Divided Five, Big Dig. Oh boy, here we go. Somebody has to clean up when Mother Nature drops two feet of snow or more. Turns out that someone is all of us. The plows are out. So is every Coloradan with a shovel. I pretty much stopped what I was doing and try to help them get out. Things will return to normal tomorrow, but few of us will forget the blizzard of 2021. Not the only one, but should have been out here. When you see these images, do you think winter wonderland or too much shoveling? <laughs> This beautiful drone video over East Aurora shows what most of us woke up to. Covered cars, snow-packed streets, and hopefully nothing much to do but enjoy the powder. Air Tracker 7 gave us the lay of the land earlier today. Plenty of cars were still stranded on the roads. Yeah, in a lot of those cases, the cars were abandoned so long that plow drivers just plowed around them, even if it meant going outside the lanes. And every plow driver in the metro earning their paycheck today. And thank you, by the way, from all of us if you're watching. Air Tracker 7 spotted the crews at DIA clearing off runways this afternoon. The airport finally reopened just a few runways about 2 o'clock today. They'd canceled thousands of flights during the storm. So we are, of course, continuing our team coverage of the storm tonight. Mike Nelson, Sloan Dickey, and Gary Broad will join us in a bit to break down the big dig out. And first, though, some perspective on the sheer size of this storm. DIA received 20 seven inches of snow. It's the fourth largest snowstorm in state history. Typically, Denver gets 56 inches of snow during the winter. We got almost half of that during this one storm. And boy, did we need it, right? This heavy, wet snowfall flipped us from below average snowfall to above average snowfall for the winter. And while we saw some semis that couldn't really handle the weather, we also saw a few people go above and beyond to help others. I want you to take a look at this. Connor shared this video. This is from Highway 34. A man in this GMC truck, can you see him, got out with the tow rope and then pulled that 18-wheeler out of the snowdrift. Nice work. And this is a story we saw play out over and over again over the past couple of days. Denver 7's Gary Broad is joining us live here in Denver. And Gary, I know you've been out driving all day long, and there are yeah. still abandoned cars everywhere. It's very interesting. We're here in downtown Denver right now where you can see a lot of people just don't even care. They're going to let the old sunshine do the shoveling for them. But yeah, as we get, went around the city today, saw a lot of cars on the road, whether it was on the highway or near DIA. I was saying it looked like a boneyard. But look, the, the, the fact of the matter is now is the time with this beautiful weather we're getting for those folks to dig out their cars before someone else does. Now that the storm is over, the real fun can begin for Chevy Nielsen. It's piled up pretty bad. Nielsen left work Sunday night. He never made it home. Luckily, a passerby took him to a nearby hotel. But Monday morning, Nielsen's car could be found on a side of a road right off I-70, surrounded by others stranded in the snow. I'm the only one, you know, so it wasn't. But should have been out here, that's for sure. In Brighton, enough cars needed a tow. They decided to take all of them to Dick's Sporting Goods inside Prairie Center. Cars left overnight line busy roads like Pena Boulevard this morning. We tried to go around somebody that was stuck and then immediately just got stuck in this drift. Not far from Pena on 56th Street near DIA is where even more drivers were stranded. Josh Pagliaro tweeted this video Sunday night. All of a sudden the storm uh, took hold. And we got stranded with about 20 other cars on uh, this stretch of the road. It wasn't long after that tweet, Aaron Williams found Pagliaro and his family. I pretty much stopped what I was doing and tried to help them get out. Williams, a United Airlines employee on his way home from work, used an ice scraper and his bare hands to dig two families out of the snow. I just kept digging and digging until they finally, you know, got out, turned around and went on their way. Williams ended up being punished for his good deed because his car also got stuck. Monday morning, Williams went back to get his car and helped out two more families in the process. If somebody needs help, I do the best I can to help. Nielsen certainly could have used Williams' help that night. The next morning, Williams may not have been there, but Bill Cornwell was. You know, just trying to help people out wherever we can. Cornwell is a cardiologist at the University of Colorado Hospital. He too was stranded last night, choosing to sleep in the hospital instead of testing the roads. Just trying to do my best to find my way home, following roads that are open and you know, trying to stay safe. Between Cornwell, another fellow passerby, and two strapping Denver 7 journalists, Nielsen was able to break free. We all need to, you know, help each other out wherever we can. You know, look forward to tomorrow and a better day. 
And we did see quite a few people throughout the day helping neighbors, helping neighbors, strangers, helping strangers get their cars out in a similar situation like we saw with Chevy Nielsen right there. I did speak to a CDOT representative. They tell me that they removed several cars and tractor trailers from I-70, but as they put it, mission accomplished. I-70 back open for business. Reporting live here in Denver, Gary Broad. Denver 7. And thanks in part to you, it seems. Gary, nice work out nice. there tonight. So let's bring in our chief meteorologist now, Mike Nelson. And Mike, that storm was really something. And I think I speak for a lot of people when I say my shoulders and my back <laughs> hurt from shoveling. But really, what comes next? <laughs> Mine too, as a matter of fact. Uh, what comes next? Dense fog and then more snow and then 60s. Let me show you what's happening right now. This is a view currently at City Park. It's a beautiful shot with all that snow on the ground at the moment. There are a few flurries lingering in the mountains and some out on the northeast plains, but it is across northeast Colorado, including the Denver area. We have a dense fog advisory tonight from midnight until 10 a.m. tomorrow. The reason all that cold snow, the moisture at low levels, it will form into fog and with temperature site dropping down to around 20, that'll be freezing fog. So not only do we have the problem of the streets and sidewalks being slick now, the bridges, the ramps, the overpasses may get iced up with that frozen fog by morning. And there's another storm, but it's mostly to the south of us. A winter storm watch for up to a foot of snow down in the wet mountains and the Sangre de Cristos. Look at the numbers across the state. You can see where there's not any snow on the ground. 57 at Trinidad, 52 Lamar, Pueblo at 50, even Ray and Burlington in the low 40s. We've been refrigerated here because of that snow on the ground. So here are your headlines. Watch out for dense fog overnight. Another storm's coming, but it'll be weaker and to the south. And there is lots of melting coming up in the seven day. That's great. Thank you. And mail carriers have been told not to deliver to any mailboxes that are too dangerous to get to. The USPS told us today that mail delivery could be impacted for a couple of days while people work to dig out. So if your mail isn't delivered, you can pick it up at the local post office. And power companies are slowly chipping away at the outages that impacted tens of thousands of people during this storm. Number seven Sloan Dickey in Fort Collins tonight with that piece of our story. Sloan. Yeah, as Mike said, there's lots of melting going on right now. The, the storm hit Fort Collins really, really hard. And if you can see behind me, there's snow on the ground. There's snow in the trees. It's not just the amount of snow that fell, it's the weight as well. We heard from city officials who said it could be a week until all the roads are plowed because tracks are unable to move this slush that was now iced over. Also, we heard from XL Energy restoring power to many areas in the city that were knocked out from down trees and power lines. They say most of the power has been restored. There's now just under 10,000 Coloradans without power. So I think it's really the repair of the broken infrastructure pieces uh, is probably the biggest, um, the biggest cause that we're seeing. It's just the weight of that heavy wet snow. Now XL does say that it will take some time to get to those rural areas across the state. The most important thing that you can do if your power does go out over the next few days is to contact them online or make sure you give XL a call. Guys. All right, Sloan Dickey, thank you very much. And most of the plow drivers in the Denver Metro are working 12 hour shifts to keep everybody safe. It hasn't been easy. This large dump truck type plow went off the road south of Parker overnight. Another plow then had to come to the rescue. But CDOT told us Sunday morning these drivers are ready for anything. I think they're born for this. <laughs> we're, we're a well-oiled <laughs> machine. All of us are really. I mean, this is this is what we do. And this is where we really, really shine in, in situations like this. And as we mentioned earlier, DIA finally reopened about 2 o'clock this afternoon after snow closed it for more than 24 hours. Now, there could still be trickle-down delays and cancellations over the next couple of days while the airport gets back to back up to speed. In fact, it's already impacted the NHL. The league had to scrap tonight's game between the LA Kings and the St. Louis Blues. The Kings played in Colorado yesterday and because of the snow, they couldn't make it to St. Louis for game time. Next at five, higher taxes, shots in arms and money in pockets. The president's stimulus is taking effect. Why the next round of economic relief could mean higher taxes for some. Plus, Colorado gets creative to measure the impact of the weekend snowstorm and an important message from weather skeptics to Colorado meteorologists. I say, oh, they missed this one, but uh, it was right on time. 